everyone, welcome to another defaultroot.co.uk technical video. Today we're going to cover off RIP and more specifically uh, Split Horizon with RIP. Um, let's just go straight into this. Here's the topology. We've got three routes today. Um, route 1, Route 2, Route 3. And uh, Route 1 has been configured as a frame relay hub. And uh, Route 2 and Route 3 are configured as the spokes. Um, route 2 and Route 3 you've got point to point sub interfaces on S2 slash 0 um, with DLCs 201 for Route 2 and 301 for Route 3 going to R1 and R1's got a uh, multi point sub interface on S2 slash 0.123 and on DLC 123 so um, that's that's basically the frame relay topology and what we're going to do today is just prove out sp uh, Split Horizon and how that works. So I guess we'll just do a little bit of a re recap on Split Horizon. Um, you guys probably already know, but the Split Horizon rule is there to prevent loop uh, routing loops. Um, because, you know, uh, distance vector protocols like RIP are pretty slow at uh, convergence. So, you know, there's a possibility there that uh, a route advertised from, um, uh, from, from one device that, that fails um, could could be could be in the routing table of another device on the uh, on that network, and if that other device starts advertising itself um, as a uh, connection point for that failed network, then the traffic for that failed network then gets delivered to the wrong place, and uh, that's not a good thing. So, um, and also, you know, if you've got two if you've got two devices advertising the same network with the same metric, then you've got some uh, some issues there with with uh, with with two available routes that you'll never use uh, what 50% of the time. So uh, split horizons there to protect us from routing loops and uh, bad 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 routing tables really, and um, on a on a on a broadcast network that works really well, but on something like frame relay where it's a uh, non-broadcast and um, especially in this case in particular where you've got a multi-point interface, split horizon kind of kind of breaks down. So split horizon it's all about um, you know the, the saying is um, so never advertise out a route. Uh, through the same interface it was it was sourced from. So in uh, in a broadcast network, if this was a broadcast network and R2 was advertising availability for its loopback interface, let's say its looping loopback interface was 2.2.2.2 and it was advertising that network onto this and it was a broadcast network, R1 and R3 would pick up that network and put it in its routing table um, but then R1 and R3 would not advertise 2.2.2.2 back out into this into this shared broadcast network because you don't advertise out what you just learned um, through, via the same interface. Okay, so that's the that's the whole ethos behind Split Horizon, and what um, what what we're gonna but what we're gonna find here on this on this frame relay network is that the that the routes we learn from let's say R2, so R2's loopback interface now uh, is a point to point link to R1. Um, so it'll advertise its loopback interface to, to R1, so R1 should have a, a route in there for R2, but that, that route won't get advertised onto R3 because the split horizon rule kicks in. Yeah. So we've learned the route through this multipoint interface here. We won't advertise that route back out through this multipoint interface here because split horizon is uh, is on there. So we'll um, we'll we'll have to disable split horizon to get that route from R2 advertised to R3, and also vice versa, R3's loopback interface advertised to R2. So uh, so let's crack on with this. We've already configured RIP on R1, R2 and R3. They're all singing and all dancing. We are uh, advertising the loopback interfaces from R1, R2 and R3 into RIP database. So let's just have a look at to, uh, into R1's uh, routing table. Let's just do a show IP route RIP. And uh, you see we're learning the uh, the loopback interface for R2 there and, uh, and R3 there. And both of those are coming through this same sub interface serial 20123. Let's just hop onto R2 and prove out that R2 only sees R1's loopback interface, which it does. So this is like I say, you know, R2 and R1, they're kind of like point to point, they're like just talking to each other at the moment, advertising each other's loopback interfaces. Um, but R3's loopback interface, which was learned through this multi point interface here, isn't being advertised back out to R2. So there you go, that's proved out there. Let's just have a look at R3. Do a show IP right, rip. There we go. So again, R3 is only learning the um, the loopback interface from R1 and not the loopback interface from R2 because it's because of split horizon. So what we'll do what we'll do now we'll just put a debug on here. Um, let's just see this uh, this all happening. 
So what have we got here? We're seeing the R1. We're seeing the R1 um, is advertising its loop back interface here. Um, we've rec we're receiving that from R1 there with a with a hop count of one. And uh, and then we're building an update and we're advertising that out to uh, to our to our neighbours with a metric of two. Yeah. Okay. All right, that's good. So uh, that's that's debugs running there now. So what I want to do, I want to just basically um, disable split horizon, and then hopefully we'll get uh, R2 and R3's tables updated with uh, each other's loopback interfaces. So let's go ahead and do that. So split horizon is a, an interface command. It's not going to be under the RIP process itself. So we've got interface uh, two zero uh, sub interface one twenty three. That's a multi point interface. And then basically we, we just disable it. So on no IP um, split horizon. If we were doing EIGRP uh, split horizon, we have to put the EIGRP keyword on the end there. So to disable split horizon for EIGRP, we put that in there. And then you put the um, EIGRP process uh, process uh, number in there as well. Uh, uh, sorry, AS number, process number, that's OSPF, beg your pardon. So uh, AS number for, for EIGRP in there. But we're doing RIP, so it's just no IP split horizon. That disable split horizon. So let's just go on to R2 and see uh, the rig RIP debug now. Hopefully we should, uh, we should start seeing some updates from uh, 4 r 3s loopback. Um, let's just uh, watch out for this. So there we go. Um, there's, there's an update received uh, from uh, R1, 123.1, for 3.3.3.0 uh, slash 24 via 150.1.123.3 in two hops, two hops away because obviously um, R3 to R1, one hop, R1 to R2, two hops. Um, and then that's uh, that, that's us building building a, a flash update that we're going to send out to our other neighbors uh, with a metric of three, obviously, because it's come through us then. So that's that's that flash update. Let's just have a quick, um, let me uh, just uh, get rid of this debug, and then we'll just do a show IP rip uh, database. Hopefully, we should see uh, R3's loop back in there, which we which we do. Um, you can see that uh, it's learned from uh, R1, um, sourced from R3. We learned it 11 seconds ago through serial 20. Let's um, let's just show the. Uh, the, the routing table with the rip in there, so you can so you can see the difference now. So before we had 1.1.1.0 uh, learned from R1, and here we've got uh, 150.1 uh, sorry 3.3.3.0 via 150.1.123.3. So that's all great. Let's have a look at R3's table now. So originally we only saw the uh, loopback interface for R1. And now, um, and now we see the interface for for R2 as well. So that's uh, that's all working. Um, you can see you can see R3. Uh, the neighbor is R2. Um, let's just have a look at the database though. Show IP rip database, and you should see that it's sourced from R1, which it is indeed. So you can see there, it's actually sourced um, the 2.2.2 network from R1. Um, Via, uh, but it came from R2, obviously, in the end. So you can see that the uh, the hub and spoke things working out there. So yeah, so that was the um, IP split horizon, and um, it's a great thing on a broadcast network, but on a frame relay hub and spoke with uh, a multi-point interface, uh, not so good. So uh, you should disable it for those uh, for those circumstances. And certainly, I've seen that on uh, on a few uh, few scenarios. So uh, hopefully, that's given you some insight. Uh, thank you for listening.